Hi everyone! Today I'm making a how-to all about backgrounds and how to change the background in your photo reference in your painting. So I've made a couple of videos before where I've talked about backgrounds. I have a video about making a plain background and a few tricks for that. But this is more when you want to take an entire scene and put it behind your main subject. And that can be really tricky to do, so I'm going to take you through some of my top tips for changing a background. Hope you enjoy the video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe here on YouTube for all my new content. And also check me out over on Patreon for really full-length tutorials on pastel. So I'm going to talk you through a few examples where I've had to mix and match my photo reference and change the background in a portrait. And it can be a tricky thing to do and there are a few things that I think about when I'm looking at suitable photos to use as my background reference. So number one is lighting. Does the lighting match from the photo references that I'm using to the new background reference? The perspective. Does the perspective match? And also, can I achieve colour harmony between the background and the subject? So those three things I'll talk about using some examples that I have worked on in the past. So let's have a look on the laptop. So let's start at looking at the most simple way to change a background, and that is just to remove whatever's in the background and add a plain colour. Um, I actually have a full tutorial on this in my how-to section on how to add a plain background, some tips for that. But in this case with Boris the Chow Chow, my main thought was to choose something that had a nice complementary colour, so something that would really set off the colours of the dog. And it was as simple as that with that one, so that's a really easy way to get rid of a background. Uh, please do check out my other video on creating a plain background. But that's the first and most simple example. Next, something that I do quite often, um, removing the background and adding a grassy background. Uh, quite often with the pet portraits, when the dogs are photographed and there's a lot of busy activity in the background, it's really simple technique just to take the whole background out and add a nice wash of green, a splash of colour and a little bit of detail towards the foreground area. One thing to bear in mind if you're going to add grass to a portrait like with this one, um, I was very aware that the viewpoint of the little girl were sort of looking down on her. So you want to make sure that you also use uh, some grass reference where you're looking down on the grass. Um, similar idea in this one. Um, again, very ugly sort of background with a lot of uh, dark colours and it just made a much nicer image to add this sort of faded, misty uh, green grass. But again, I had to think of it in terms of the perspective. We're looking slightly down on the dog here. So again, I wanted to create that feeling on the grass. So always be careful with your perspective within a piece. For example, let's have a look at a couple of dog portraits where the dogs are more at eye level. And here you can clearly see that my blades of grass become longer. So the more down in the grass you are as the viewer, the longer your blades of grass should be. So you have things like that to consider when you're trying to piece together a photo reference. Make sure that the perspective of both your background and your main subjects matches. And also while we're on this one, another thought about uh, colour and contrast. So with a light dog I've gone for really strong deep greens and where I've wanted two dark dogs to stand out I've sort of washed out the colours and made them pop a bit more from the page. So those are a few tips for adding a grassy background, something I've done a lot of especially with my pet portraits. So next we're getting into the territory of some of my favourite types of background, the bokeh background or the blurred out of focus background. And this sort of bridges the gap between a grassy background and some of the bokeh backgrounds that I'm going to show you in a minute. And with this piece uh, I really just thought that the greens that you can see in this midsection looked quite nice against the dog's colours. 
So I really took the colours that were within this small area, made them blurry and uh, just a nice texture, but used all of those colours within the background and then made sure that I also used lots of colours within the dog to tie it all together. So when you're using colours within the background, always try and have some of those colours on your main subject as that is the way light dances around in reality and you want to make sure that you've got nice colour harmony throughout the whole piece. So this is one of my favourite types of background to create, the out of focus bokeh background. And the way I did this was using the uh, photo reference of the stag as you can see here. And this was actually my photo reference for the background. Now what this is, is simply a bush with nice sunlight coming through it. But with my lens on my camera, I would set the focus to really soft and take some snaps like this. Now you can of course do that here on Photoshop just by using a simple blur uh, filter. And you can apply as much blur or as little as you want and you can play about with it there. But I also, when I'm out with my camera, uh, look about for nice colours and compositions within the landscape that I can take some pictures of and maybe later on use as a background. So I have a lot of photo reference like this which looks very random but often ends up getting used in one of my paintings. And then I would create myself a photoshopped mock-up of the painting before starting to paint. I always like to do a bit of a mock-up so that I can just see where the colours will fall, what the overall composition will look like. And another example now of using an out of focus background, only this one's a little less out of focus, a little less abstract than the last one. And the subject that I'm painting, and I'm currently working on this painting as you saw earlier, is the head portrait of the goat. But I did think that the photo reference was uh, very uninteresting and the grass in the background was a little overexposed. Not great for setting the colours of the goat off, I thought. So I went back through a lot of my uh, photo reference and I found this nice image of a little donkey. And I've sort of stolen the background from that. I liked the diagonal of the hillside, the nice blue of the sky and I made myself up a quick mock-up of that and that's the piece that I'm currently working on. So the thing that I was looking for when I looked at these two photos and thought yes those would work, uh, the main thing is where the direction of light is coming from. So on both animals, it's handy with this one because I've got an animal in it and I can clearly see where the light is coming from and it's coming from the left side of the donkey as you can see. And similarly on the goat, it's coming from the left side. So I pretty much know that all the shadows and any subtle bits of colouring in the background will look fine with this goat because the lighting in both photographs was very similar. And that's the main thing which often can trip you up with changing the background. And it's your direction of light. So if you've got shadows falling the wrong way somewhere in the painting, it's really going to jump out and seem very obvious. So just to quickly take you through what I did with the goat reference photo to come up with my mock-up or my layout. And this was the full reference photo of the goat uh, and I didn't really like the background. And I also just wanted to do a small head study as it was for a quick demo. So I firstly cropped the photo reference. Then using this lasso tool you can be neater with this, but just very quickly go around the whole outline. And with my goat's head selected, then I can copy it. This was the background that I wanted to steal, so I created a new file and brought the background in pretty much how I wanted it to cover the shape of my uh, piece, which was going to be 10 inches square. And then when I paste the goat in and I resize him to fit, 
and start to get a feel for how he'll work against those colours in the background, the greens and the nice blue of the sky. And I think it's much better than the previous photo reference. But because I'm following the rules of where the light is coming from, it's okay to swap these photos mix and match. So you could go from this. I wanted to further clean up my layout a little and you can use the clone tool if I can find it which pretty much clones whatever is underneath it so by hitting alt changes it into this and you can select then when I bring it over here it paints in what was over to the left. It's a great tool this sometimes I just use it when I need some help in visualizing something I need to do a bit of a uh, quick bit of digital painting I suppose just to get a better uh, feel for the layout in my head before starting. So something roughly like that and also I took out the lines just to help me visualize it a little better and I think I continued on down here, got rid of the rest of the donkey, but you can see how quickly with a, a couple of minutes on Photoshop you can throw together a, a layout that helps you visualize your end painting. So I've got some tutorials on my YouTube channel to help you actually paint these out of focus bokeh backgrounds. You can check one or two of those out already, but I'll also release this particular background with the goat when I'm finished. So here is a background with a bit of a difference. Um, this wasn't going for realism. Um, I wanted to create pattern and just a bit of interest in the background rather than going for a realistic scene. And this is actually my own grandmother. And yes, this is little baby me many years ago. And I always wanted to take just my grand from this picture and make a nice head portrait of her, but I was never too sure what to do with the background. And she was a great lover of the color blue and loud patterns. So I used the, the little hint of her dress here to bring out more blues in the background. And I don't know if you have clocked it, but I actually used one of Van Gogh's paintings as a bit of inspiration for uh, some turbulence in the background. So that's another idea. You can go for something that has a flat quality to it um, either with pattern or plain colour and really create quite a statement with that as opposed to always having to go for something that is totally realistic and true to life. And lastly this is literally taking a scene from one photograph and putting it behind the main subject so not very blurry or out of focus uh, keeping the uh, focus throughout the whole painting just softening the background ever so slightly so that the dog really pops. But this was the original photo of the dog and then the client sent me some lovely pictures from within their garden and between the two then I was able to come up with this as a layout. Now the main thing that jumped out at me from this layout was this dark shadow just running down the right hand side of the dog. So if you look back over at the original photograph this shadow is really here because of this wall. So I know when I remove that wall, this shadow won't exist. So that was something that I had to think about in this composition to make sure that in my painting I didn't have this shadow running down here. So it's little details like that uh, that can trip you up when changing the background. You really need to look at how light is bouncing off everything, where there should be shadows, the direction those shadows should be going. Uh, the perspective that you're looking at the view from, all of those things, bear all of those things in mind. Uh, anytime you start messing about with photo reference, it's very easy to make something look a bit odd or uh, a bit glaring uh, in your painting version. So just be careful to consider light and shade, your perspective, and also always making sure to use some of your colors from your background within your main subject for a bit of extra colour harmony. So I hope you find this helpful and the next time you've got to do some mixing and matching of photo reference that some of these tips become useful to you. 
If you haven't already, please do subscribe here on YouTube for all my future content. And also check out my Patreon channel if you'd like some more in-depth tutorials and lots more. But until next time, happy pastling.